mad trucker, man. Nah, mad trucker, mad trucker. I not not because you know people people get it misunderstood because it says mad trucker, but I'm like it's not mad because I'm like aggravated or anything. It's just I just do mad trucking. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't, you know, cause I, I'm just out there. I, I, you know, I go home every week. I don't do no, le- no, no less than four thousand miles in a period of 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 six to seven days, and I'm back home. What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Breaking Truckers. I, I can't do it. We'll do it live. We'll do it live. Fuck it. Do it live. I, I'll write it, and we'll do it live. A mad trucker in the building. <laughs> Ooh, what up, what up? Man, trucker, man, what's good, my guy? So uh, I see, yeah, I, I see your phone pings you up in Texas. That's where we at. Uh, right now I'm in Missouri, but I I reside in Texas now. I'm originally from New York. Uh, I hear the accent, bro. What what uh? Well, let's get into a little bit of background right quick. So you from New York, but you you reside in Texas. What 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 made you move down? What made you move from northeast down south? The weather, I bet, right? Uh, well, that that's one of the main reasons. I mean, um, you know, I got tired of the cold. I mean, you know, I suffer from a couple of motorcycle accidents, so the winter time is kind of brutal for me up there. You know, um, you know, I'm not getting any younger, and uh, I don't know. I just kind of wanted to change. You know what I mean? Well, you know, uh, you, you know, you know I, Texas I, got some mean ass snowstorms bro i mean i was i was well, messed not, up not in I waco <laughs> i mean i was down yeah, in waco I that was woo, that yeah. snowstorm down no, there no. iced up everything it, down there bro yeah it, ha- it happens and not 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 to knock the texans or nothing like that but they don't know how to drive in the snow man you know what i mean yeah but, uh, for sure yeah, where i live where i live i don't i don't i don't deal with no snowstorms man. Well, I where, live in laredo texas oh you stay you stay in laredo yeah, I live in Laredo. Oh man, how 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 is it in Laredo, man? Because I I mean I I don't mind coming down there for the miles, but woo, that border, hitting some of them hitting some of them dots down there is like, it's like a miracle. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I admit it's a tight place, man. It's not somewhere you want to come down with your long nose Peter belt and get into every warehouse over there because there are some tight places over there. Right. Um, they they don't have they don't have distribution you know, centers down there. They got warehouses and it's like in a hole in they, the wall. Yeah. Yeah, but you want to know something the progress is there in Laredo, man. I mean, since I've been there, I mean, it's blown up. I mean, it's a secret, but it is Laredo's blowing up. Uh, and you know, in between law, you know the 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 residents there like far as, you know, law enforcement and 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 the truck drivers like it, it's when I first moved down there, the population was like about 170 to 180 thousand. Now today, at this date, and I've been living there going on nine years already, it's it's up to, it's up to over 350 thousand down there right now. So you moved. So did you so move down a, there? Did you move down there solo, or you took your family with you? Well, my 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 kids are all grown up. Uh, just, uh, about six years ago, I got custody of my grandson. So, you know, uh, my third oldest grandson, he, he lives with me down there and he loves it. He loves it down there in Texas. Texas is different for the kids, man. Nothing like back home. Um, but, uh, yeah, he loves it down there. All know? right. So I, I moved down there. I moved down there with the family. You know, okay. Okay. I, All right. So Matt, man. So did you, so where did you get your, uh, where did you get your license? Did you get it while you was up in uh, New York, or you went to a different state to to get your license? Well, I lived in Jersey at the time. I worked for a towing company, and it wasn't it wasn't my choice to get to get my CDL. I'll tell you the story why I got my CDL. All I worked for a towing company out of U- Union City, New Jersey. It's called High Point Towing. They did a lot of towing in the on the turnpike and stuff like that. It was a big outfit. It was like second, third generation, uh, you know, Italian ties. You know, I don't want to get into that, but anyway, what happened was, I used to drive the records, man. I used to drive the big trucks, you know, without a CDL. And um, one time, I made a move for them, and I got popped by the state police, 
And, uh, you know, you know, it's a big, it's a big issue when you get caught driving a, you know, uh, a commercial vehicle of that size with, with no CDL. Put that coffee down. Right. You, you, and, was, uh, you, you was, was driving that, the, you was driving the toll record. The one, the one that, uh, the one that. Yeah, tows the I was semis. driving the toll. Uh, uh, yeah. Yes, sir. Oh, okay. And, so and you need your CDL for that one. Also. You, you, no, you need a CDL to drive something with air brakes, period. Oh, <laughs> okay. So that was what, okay, okay, okay. Because you don't need, you don't need your CDL for one of the smaller records that, that tow cars, no, right? No, no. Right. No, 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 no. You don't need a CDL for that, no. Especially in Jersey, it's not restricted like it, how it is in uh, in New York. In New York, you need a special type of license to tow to tow the cars and stuff like that. It's not like a commercial license, but it's a tow license that they have out there. Oh, you know, okay. New York got so many gimmicks to get make money. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know what? New anyway. York got man. New York is just New York is just New York, man. They 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 find yeah. ways to skim money off the top, bro. They're like for the cabs. Oh yeah, without a doubt. For the cabs, you gotta have one of them medallions and all like that. Then when Lyft and Uber came in, they they made it they made it so they made it so that Lyft and Uber has to get some type of license and all like that. And then yeah. with the and with the towing, like you said, you got to get, you know, you got your personal license, but you had to have another special type of license and all like that. So New York yeah. is just is is just. No, New York is different. You know those yellow cabs. You know those yellow cabs. You know those medallions that you see that that stamped on there and they, that they're like uh, riveted into their hood. They gotta pay like let's like say like about it's almost a quarter of a million dollars for that medallion, for just one cab. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no bullshit, man. It's it's expensive. It's expensive to have a, 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 that type of business over there. But uh, no, but the Uber drivers, the Uber drivers, <laughs> yeah, I got popped. All right, I got popped. You got popped, and yes, sir. And they was like, so what? What, what was the what so, was the conversation between you and the trooper? I, I mean, like. You're like, yeah, girl, you know, I, I got my license. You know, I didn't, you know, they said for yeah, me. Yeah, 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 I got my license. It wasn't out of an accident or anything like that. It's just I just went down the road, and it happened in Elizabeth, and I was trying to turn back around to, so I could shoot back to the yard in, in North Bergen, New Jersey. And, uh, you know, and the trooper got me, and uh, he was like, hey, you know, come here, buddy, let me get your information and all that and i gave him my information i didn't tell him anything i was just trying to play it off and he comes back to the thing he comes back he's like hey buddy he goes you know you're not authorized to drive this i said but i could drive it he goes yeah but you don't have a commercial driver's license so he's like i'm gonna have to call your call your boss right now so that was the whole big thing so, so i had to go to court for that oh wow you had to so, you, you couldn't just pay so, the ticket yeah. No, there was no pain, no ticket. But check this out. So I guess, you know, because of the because of the ties that my boss had, right? You know, I went to court. You know, they dismissed the ticket only if I got my CDL. I wouldn't have to pay a $10,000 fine or nothing like that. So I was kind of forced into getting my CDL. Okay, okay. So did did you go to uh did you go to a school or did you go to a trucking company to acquire uh, your no. CDL? I did. I didn't have to. They had tractors. They had. They had everything there. So, what I did was all I did was was in the wrecker. You know, I, I went with a wrecker, hooked up a hooked up a um a, a tractor to it, and I took the test in that. What? But I told you, if, yeah, I took it because it's it's articulating, and you know, that's it. <laughs> that was it. That, okay. that was it. That was my, okay. that was my road test. Okay, you so know. you went out. Well, of course, you went on ahead and passed the road to ask, got your uh, got your CDL. Why why didn't you yes, stay? Sir. Why why didn't you stay uh, with the record company? Because I I, I would assume the money is there. Oh man. Well, like I said, man, you know, mob ties. You know, things happen, and uh, you know, thank God I didn't go down with none of it that went down. I I don't know if you want to do your homework. It was a, a towing company out of Union City called High Point High Point Garage, and uh, you know things happen, and uh, you know all, all good things must come to an end. You know I don't I don't I don't want to say anything to incriminate myself. Or, yeah, 
but um they they cl- they cl- they closed down and and uh you know so i'm like where, where where do i go from here you know so i started driving locally over there and i never mind you i never driven a tractor trailer so i mean it was a little it was a little tough for me you know so i, I worked for a local guy uh there i was just running from you know from jersey to massachusetts ohio like you know, we'll, we'll, we'll be considered local up there, Pennsylvania, Maine. Now, now you know, let me Boston. ask you something. You, you, you drove a, you, you, since you was local, you, you was driving a day cab, right? Well, actually, no. It was the first, the first uh, rig that I drove was a Volvo. It wasn't a day cab. So it was how? A Volvo with a 70 inch trunk. How, how was, you know, I, I know, like, up in, up in the Northeast, I'm, I'm definitely not a fan in the Northeast. So I'll, I'll drive up there in my personal yeah. vehicle, but with a with a with a tractor and trailer, man, I'm I'm not a I'm not a fan at all. But <laughs> you know, being that you're yeah. you're from Jersey, you driving in Jersey, how you are are you used to driving up there? Being that you from there, you know, driving that whole little area, yeah. Pennsylvania, Jersey, New York, are you used to all of yeah, that? Yeah, like I I I'm I'm used to it. I mean, I'm not a big fan of it. You know, I mean, it's it's only got worse, like the traffic, the people, you know, it's only gotten worse. But, um, yeah, I could get around. I swing around up there with no problem. You know what I mean? I, I know the do's and don'ts over there. You know what I mean? And just for any drivers that, you know, that are listening to this, just, just know for self, anything that says parkway up in the northeast, do not take it. <laughs> you do said not don't take that. it. Any type of parkway is up there. Do not take it. You said Parkway don't take it. No, no, for semis. <laughs> don't take it. You say don't you know? take it. Don't you don't believe it? it. <laughs> yeah, we yeah, see. You know, I, I've seen a lot of videos of a lot of truck drivers getting hemmed up on parkways, man. I mean, some yeah, drive, some yeah, drivers, you, you know, some drivers. Uh, what, what what do you call it? Sardine can the trailers and all like that, yeah, man. They, they open it up late. Yeah, uh, I it mean, up like it's cans. Yes, sir. it's 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 crazy. How how do you think? And I know not not from veteran drivers because I know veteran drivers pretty much know you know know when they get up there. But how do you think because of the drivers getting hemmed up on the parkways? What do you think that have them getting on the parkways? And please don't say the GPS. <laughs> um, I believe they they don't they, they don't have a trucker GPS, and they don't they they probably don't uh, see the signs. Because over there, there's a lot of things you you could get distracted real easily real easily over there, and you could miss a sign, you know. But most likely they're on Google Maps. You know what I'm trying to say? And um, drivers, please, Google Maps is not a good way to get around in the semi especially with a 53 foot you know a 13 6 is is is, is a no-no yeah you only know? only you use it for reference, e- you e- cross reference. yep yeah. I, I was just about to say that i i, I cross i cross reference you know to see where i'm going what what the outlook looks like if i could park there you know i use it like that you know but uh not not to get me there you know you understand what i'm saying right see because i use it, i use no-no. i use my google maps on a, on the highways that's that's what i do but when i'm off the highways you know i got uh i got my ram and nally and my uh and my um and my garmin you know to get me on the you know on the yeah. on the road man all right so you know, i was a big fan i was a big fan of ram mcnally but uh I'm 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 liking Garmin a lot more than Rand McNally. Yeah, Rand, I, I got you know the what what I had the seven I had the seven thirty. Unfortunately, the 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 um, the plug melted in the uh, in the little socket that I had, and I had to get another Ram you know get another GPS. I got the new Rand McNally, the the seven forty or seven fifty or whatever. And I say right. maybe about eight months later, man, the motherfucker, the motherfucker crapped out on me. I mean, I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah, I, I don't, I yeah, I don't want to shit on Rad McNally, but ever since, uh, like when I started trucking, it was all by map, you know. Um, the hardest place I had to get around, I would have to say, it was Boston. Boston was a little tough, man. I, I mean, you know, those streets are not designed for track trailers and nothing like that, and you know. 
I can, you know, you could say I was a rookie, you know what I mean? Because I'd never driven the tractor trailers before, you know, in city streets and stuff. And uh, I, I had it tough, man. I had it tough, man. Because if you missed a turn and, you know, you're on the map, they had no navigation at that time. I couldn't afford it. You know, navigations, when they came out at that time, they were like $1,000. Yeah, they man. was they like, like eight. No yeah, they was like eight. You know, when they first started, they was yeah. like five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars. And it looked like, you know, it looked yeah. like they, it looked like they did a damn 360, bruh. Because the, the, the yeah. Garmin 10 inch, what is it? The Garmin 10 inch is like 800 bucks. I'm like, bro, who need that type of real yeah. estate in your windshield, my guy? <laughs> True. I mean, That's big facts on that. Man. I mean, I, I got know? a, I got a seven inch and I was still wheeling on the, on the $400 price tag that I paid for that. <laughs> you know, yeah, but no, eight hundred, but eight hundred bucks, you. and then I think Raymond Nelly came out with a with another tablet size, uh, GPS, uh, close to like nine nine hundred bucks, man. That's crazy. That's yeah, crazy. I mean, man, Raymond Nelly's on point with the directions, man. But I just I don't know what it is, man. They just uh, they they don't last more than a year, man. Yeah, they, I, they really don't. Yeah. The durability of them I got, just don't last. And I got to admit, my, my 730, guys, my 730 yeah. still lasts. Like I said, the only thing that happened to it was that the plug melted. That was about it because I had it in one of them bullshit ass three prong or you, three, three things. You, know you know which one I regret giving up? The first Ram McNally's. Remember the first one that came out with? thick like a like like, like, oh, like a little textbook yeah, and it had the yeah, orange power button yeah yeah those was the best ones those was those, the, those best the best ones best. yeah and it just those are the best it just got crappy after oh. that so all right man yeah, so uh let's let's uh fast forward to uh last week guy i mean you you oh, at you man, you at God, the loves crazy. You you at the loves. You chilling. You 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 in the you 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 getting your truck worked on. But all of a sudden, take it from there. Every day for the last ten years, Loretta there has been giving me a large black coffee. Today she gives me a large black coffee. Only it's got sugar in it. A lot of sugar. I just came back to complain. How you boys? Put those guns down. Yeah. All of a sudden, I was about to, I was just minutes away from turning the key and taking off. I was inside. I was about to rack up on some love points. And um, next thing you know, I hear one of the, we, we, well, me and the, the, the guy that was taking care of me inside the, inside the office, we hear, we hear, you know, like a, a crazy ass scream. And it didn't sound normal coming from a dude, you know? So we're like, what the hell? We both run out. He's like, hit the truck. I'm like, hit what truck? You know, because we I didn't hear nothing inside there. So I'm I'm walking down the passenger side of the truck, not thinking it's my truck. I'm thinking it's something else. But as I, I start to get closer to the front end of the truck, I'm like, oh shit, he hit my truck. And when I turn and I look, and I'm like, whoa. And then homeboy is like, if anybody just loves it, Natalia, you know, if you make a right out of the out of out of the fuel island, it's a long driveway to the street. And he, homeboy, was ready, like almost like to the street already. And I, you know, and you see me in the end of the video. I take a, I take a dash. I, I started running after him, and I guess he kind of figured out he wasn't gonna go nowhere pulling the house. And uh, he was like, "Oh no!" He goes, "I wasn't trying to run." This is the first thing that came out of his mouth. He goes, "I wasn't trying to run. I, I just didn't want to block the fuel island." And I'm looking at him. I'm like, "Bro, with all that real estate over there, you were worrying about blocking the fuel island." I mean, man, that was crazy. I was just like, you know what? So he, so he no, came. I wasn't upset. So you know? he came. So he came out of the fuel island, and then. No, it, actually, no. he swung around the parking lot, mm -hmm. around the outside of the fuel island, came across in front of the fuel island. I was parked facing the fuel island. All right, I was like, because you know they have in, in Natalia, they have two bays that's uh, two two garage bays that goes inside the building. And then they have like a, a metal bay on the end of the garage where I was at. So three quarters of my trailer was in there, you know? So, you know, like the truck was out, but like there's plenty of room there. You know, the first the first guy pulling the house made it through with no problem. But I know exactly what happened because there was a car hauler in between them. And it, instead of him 
I don't know, because he, he was far away. Like, when he first came into my, my video in the dash cam, he was real far away. I don't know what possessed him to cut that hard to his left, because if you look at the video, it looks like my truck rolled into him. You know what I'm trying to say? And that wasn't the case because I wasn't, you know, I got a lot of comments about that. Like, oh, you, you rolled into him. I'm like, dude, I wasn't even in the truck. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't even in the truck. I mean, it, the truck was standing still. There was still wheel chocks on the trailer. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's just crazy, man. I ended up, so I was like, you know what? They were like, well, we'll bring you another truck. I said, you know what? This trip isn't meant for me. My gut feeling told me because I ended up there in Lowe's because I had a blowout. You know what I mean? So, so it that's was why several. I ended up in Lowe's. I had it, a blowout in the trailer. It was several things that 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 was kind of kind of telling you about yeah, this trip that yeah, you was on, and then yeah. you got the blowout. Okay, you about to get that fist, but then homeboy ran into you. So that pretty much that pretty much solidified yeah. the fact that like, yo take 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 me off this load and I you know get a new truck. Yeah, You're a company yeah, driver, right? I, I, Yes, sir. I'm a company driver. Oh, okay. So the truck, so, so the truck was a company truck. So it, it really didn't. It was. It, it wasn't a. It wasn't a matter of that truck being yours and you being out of out of out of you know out of commission. No, I think I think if I if if, if it was my truck, I think I would have needed bail money that day, man. Because you know I I I feel if I because I'll be honest with you, man. I I had the experience of being an owner operator for a little while. You know what I'm trying to say? And, you know, not I, I didn't fail because, like, I was a slacker or mismanaged money or anything like that. I just failed because of my knowledge. You know what I'm trying to say? You know, I was all happy. I, my, my first truck I bought was a Peterbilt, and I was all, like, you know, I was all hunky dog. I was, like, I was all, like, badass, you know? And then that's every truck driver, you know, they want a, you know, they want a nice truck, you know? And I had a badass truck, and but I just didn't have the knowledge of, you know, I shouldn't have got a truck with a Packard motor in it. You know what I'm trying to say? So that was that was the demise, you know. Um, you know, for all you drivers out there, know what you're going to get, man, before you get it. Because uh, I didn't know. And, and eight months, you know, I had I had a good, maybe a good uh, six months with the truck. I made good money. And then, um, you know, just one thing after another, man, it just, it just happened. And in a matter of, I say in a matter of... Uh, Six months. In a matter of six months, I went to thirty thirty one thousand dollars. Ouch! How how long you was how at that point when you got your when you decided to you know get your truck and go owner operating? How long uh, was you driving before you got the truck? How long was I driving? I was driving for about I would say fifteen years already. I've been driving. 12 years OTR. I say maybe I was driving a good maybe two and a half years. Okay, okay. So two and a, you, yeah, you know like two, and two and a half, half years, years is not yeah. two and a half years is 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 not bad. I I would say if anybody has aspirations for you know going on or operating and and owning their own truck, you know two and a half years is about a good about a good foot. You know the 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 get yeah. the you know to learn a little bit about the business. And all like that, but when you actually got yeah. the truck, when you actually got the truck and and started running your business, how hard? How what was the difficulties for you when you know, when when you started running, you know, running your own, you know, own truck and everything? What well, when did the difficulties started coming into play? Um, the difficulties started coming into play was uh, I had a broker beat me for nine grand. Um, then, you know, when, when things started happening with the truck, man, it was just a domino effect. Like things when, you know, you know, I bought the truck with 400,000 miles, you know, didn't know too much about death and stuff like that, you know, and, and, you know, I, I, I just really thought that Packard was a good motor, you know, and, and because, it, you know, I wouldn't think that Kenworth and Peterbilt will back it and put it in their truck, you know? So, you know, I, I say it was more of my bad because I didn't ask questions. You know, uh, I didn't ask more questions about, well, you know, about that, you know, that, that motor. And then, you know, I started to learn because I was like, you know, I would try to go to the local, you know, mechanic and get an oil change. And they didn't even want to even touch it. They didn't want to give it an oil change at all. They didn't even want to touch it. 
keep it 100. So I had to go to like the dealer or Speedco or something like that. And the oil changes were running about anywhere from 600 to $700, man. Yeah. And yeah, so I mean, the oil changes wasn't the big factor. I mean, like, listen, when you buy a truck from a, a dealer and you, you finance it w- through the bank, through the dealer and stuff like that, they make you get a warranty. See, now, they don't tell you this with the warranty, all right? They're like, oh, you know, you're a $1,000 deductible. I'm like, oh, that's cool, man. If something happens to the truck, I'm thinking in my head, you know, a deductible is a deductible, right, my, my guy, right? You know, it's $1,000. Anything happens, I, I just pay $1,000 and I, I walk free. That wasn't the case. That, that was not. Nah, man, it wasn't the case. It was not the case. The warranty, the warranty paid what they wanted to pay. You understand? And and a thousand dollars was deducted off of the bill. Yes, but there was a there, there was always a three, four thousand, five thousand, six thousand dollar bill on top of that. So so you know the first time you know I was kind of irate. You know I'm on the phone with the warranty company. You know and they're like, no, well this is what you know this is what our program calls. This is what they should charge. You know, this is the amount of hours I'm really, you can't, but you can't put a price on somebody's work. Well, you know, this is, this is how the warranty works. I'm like, wow, bro. So I turned to the dealer, you know, once in the blue, they, you know, they get, they come me a break, a little 400, $500 here and there. But dude, it was points that like, I couldn't even make it out of Laredo. Like it, it was just problem after problem. Right. And you know what? And I think when when did know, these? And, yeah, and you, I just, mean, the, the, when when did these problems start coming into play? Like like like, how long did it start coming into play for the truck, man? I mean, you went to the well, dealership, I, but, you got a a, a long note. What was it? A long nose Peterbilt? No, it was a three eight six. Three eight six. I couldn't. I couldn't. Yeah, a three eight six Peterbilt. Um. You know, it only it was thirteen speed. It only had it only had um four hundred thousand miles even on it. You know, so you know four hundred thousand miles. It's just you know you know I, I you know I, I knew at that point like yo that's just the truck just getting broken in. You know what I'm saying? So, but now know this. That's that's yeah that's a truck just getting broken in. But that's a truck when they have death systems. That's a truck about to have problems. You understand what I'm saying? You know? Um, so no, I didn't I didn't foresee those problems at all. No, no. Because you know, death 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 was kind of fresh in, in 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 the industry, you know what I'm trying to say? Like it wasn't it wasn't a big it wasn't such a big issue. Like, you know, I didn't hear people complaining about the problems they were having, you know? So that's what it came down to. And I think the dealer kind of got me because, you know, I, I just feel like they band-aided the problem for me. To, they didn't diagnose what, 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 what was the real problem. You know what I'm trying to say? They just fixed it to get me going, you know? So, you know, like I said, I put 90,000 miles on the truck without a problem. You know what I mean? And then after that, just issues started happening. You know, right. so mad um, man, you 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 rocked out on the owner operator side for a hot minute. Uh, did you did yeah. you run? Did you did you get an authority to run everything, or you just leased on with uh, uh with a no, company? I, I didn't. I didn't. I I had I had an authority, but I was leased on to a company, right? And what I was doing was with my authority because you know a lot of these a lot of these brokers they they can't touch you, you know, with a fresh authority. So what I would do was I would I would run out I would run out on their authority I I'll leave out of Laredo on their authority and then I'll do a chippy you know a chippy load on my authority so I could start you know getting some some you know feedback some you know some some loads under my back under my jacket under my authority. How you, you, you know, know what I'm trying to say so that way we'll, a lot. Oh sorry I I didn't mean to cut you off I didn't mean to cut you off go ahead. No that's all good. Oh. No, now, go ahead. Uh, you know, a lot of these new drivers. Now, you, you know, you already two years in and all like that. You're, you know, you, you, you're a fresh guy, fresh owner operator, and all like that. But these new guys out here just don't understand how hard it is after they get their authority. How hard it is to 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 book the good loads, right? How yeah, how they hard was it? And I think. How hard was it for you to get to get the good loads? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So. 
You know, this is, excuse me, a damn fine cup of coffee. I've had, I can't tell you how many cups of coffee in my life, and this, this is one of the best. Well, you want to know what? I had some relations with some brokers at the time, and they hooked me up. You know what I'm trying to say? They'll, they'll slip me something here and there. But them brokers wouldn't have loads all the time for me. You, you understand what I'm trying to say? And, and, and without that, it would have been even harder. You, you understand what I'm saying? But I didn't, I didn't have enough time with that truck to take off with my, uh, with my own authority. You know what I'm trying to say? So, I mean, you know, I, I froze it. And, um, you know, I mean, do, do I have inspirations? I'm like, you know, I think about it. You know, now, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm raising my grandson. You know, being a company driver, I have more time at home. You know, another thing is when you're an owner-operator, you have no days off. When you think you're going to have days off, you really don't have no days off. You know, especially like if you're super independent and, and you don't got the money to spend to be paying mechanics for every little thing. You, you know what I'm trying to say? You got no days off. You, you really don't, my guy. You know, because your days off is going to be dedicated to your truck. And that's how I spent it in the beginning, you know, doing like minor stuff. You know, I had to change a bag here and there. I had to change, you know, some hub seals, you know, just doing things, you know, and you just, you don't, you don't have the time, you know, the trucks, these trucks are always going to need something. Always remember that, you know, you, you, you're, you're, you're running them, you run them hard and you're hitting bumps out here and there and you, you always got to check your truck. You know what I mean? You don't you don't want DOT to find something that you didn't find. You know what I mean? Exactly, and so, that and that could be a that could be a huge ticket in itself. Matt, man, yeah, listen, yes, you sir. you uh you 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 hear all the time these uh you know these veteran drivers these drivers out here over here complaining about uh you know new you know drivers taking cheap freight. Considering the fact that you was like, you know, your new authority and everything, you you trying to work it in and all like that. I already asked you how hard was it to get the good freight, but now how? What do you say to those drivers about not taking cheap freight? What what do you say to that? I mean, you shouldn't shouldn't do it. You shouldn't do it because you know you got to know your your cost per mile. It's like if you you. Right now, with the price of diesel, anybody takes a load for $2, I mean, you're going to be running your truck for less than a dollar a mile. You know what I'm saying? If you really think about it, you know what I mean? You know, don't don't forget, you got to, you know, your, your maintenance costs, your, you know, your insurance. If you got a truck payment, your truck payment, you, you got to divide all that in there. I mean, I was good with my math, you know what I'm saying? But sometimes you got to know when to quit, you know what I mean? I mean, I'm 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 a man, and I ain't afraid to admit, man. I I try to hang on to, to to the end, but it was it was to the point where it was either you know I move my family in my truck or you know I give the truck up. You understand what I'm trying to say? And I was like, damn, I can't lose nothing else, man. I lost my motorcycle, I lost my cars. You know what I mean? And and it was like, it was like, damn, man, I I I ain't got nothing else to sell but my ass. You know what I'm saying? So you know. I, I mean, I, I, you know, you really got to know what you're getting into, man. And, you know, honestly, I, I had a, you know, I had a school of hard knocks, man. Do I have the aspirations of getting another truck? Yeah, I do. But right now it's not the time, you know what I'm trying to say? Because from the time that I had, I had my truck till now, the, the industry is totally different. Like it, it's done a 180. I was you know going to ask you, I, I was going to ask you before we get up out of here, man, uh, I was going to ask you, like, do you now for you, you says it's not a good time for you to get back into owner operating. But as a whole, as of right now, like as the way as the way things going right now with diesel touching about five, six dollars a gallon and and the main the more maintenance costs on the truck. Is it really a good time to get a to 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 get a truck right now to go owner operating right now even lease do you if, think it's if, even good time to go if, that route no i i don't think so man i i really don't i i mean listen i mean you could do it but you're gonna be living in that truck i i could guarantee you i mean you know i'm not saying that it's not possible you know because anything is possible you understand what i'm trying to say and 
and all I hear is nightmares about leasing. You know, you know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't hear anything good out of, you know, uh, you know, them leasing programs and stuff like that. And, um, uh, I, I just, me and my personal opinion, the price of diesel, the price of trucks, the price of parts, you know, uh, right now and, and the way, the way the, the, the industry is going, not unless you got something solid, you know, and guaranteed, I say, I, I wouldn't do it. I mean, right now I, I, I could, I, let's say like, if I had my own truck, I, I couldn't run for no less than no, no nothing less than three dollars a mile. I couldn't do it, you know. And and you know I've I've done it all, you know. And 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 um I kind of like the dry vans for the simple reason is the dry vans you keep it moving. I mean once in a while you receiver for four or five hours, but it's not like the reefer game, you know. what I'm trying to say where where uh you know you're sitting there for six eight hours waiting for them to unload you. You understand what I'm saying? Um, you know, that ex- you got to fight for your detention time. All right. Flatbed, flatbedding is good, but you know, if you get into an area, there's no loads coming out of, sometimes you'll deadhead four, five, six, seven hundred 700 miles to get a load. You understand what I'm saying? So, you know, the dry van, there's always straight for dry van, but the problem is, is that, you know, like I said, the money, the money, you know, I, I noticed in the dry van, I move around. I, yeah, I, I, I move around pretty well in, in the dry van. You know what I mean? Like, far as, like, I, I, I don't really spend more time in, in, in the receivers like you would, a, a, you know, a reefer and stuff like that, you know? Um, because every, everything is, once you're out here, it's, it's all about time. You know what I'm trying to say? And then, you know, if the wheels ain't spinning, you ain't, you ain't earning, man. You know what I mean? All right. So, Mad so, Trucker, man, you, you mentioned in the beginning of uh, our conversation that you, you're home every week and you rocking 4,000. Bruh, how, 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 how is you yeah. rocking 4,000, my G? I, I walk, now I'm going to be honest with you. Well, I, I rock close to like like 30 i say about 35 i say 38 was like my top and that was on and that was and that was on like dropping hook i mean all my all my lows was dropping hook during that little during that little period right there but bro how yeah. was you, how, how was you ma- bro, how, how was you squeezing out an extra two what's going on what i'm doing wrong my guy look all right, man. Listen, it, it, it's all on your your. You know, anybody could dispatch a load. You know what I'm saying? But a coordinator, a coordinator. If you 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 work with a good coordinator, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know that is possible. And if you're a driver that hammers down and you know when to move, you know what I'm saying? Like you can't, you can't. Like let's say, like for example, um, I, I gotta go up to Massachusetts. You know what I'm trying to say? I'm not gonna pick. Two o'clock in the afternoon to drive up to Massachusetts. You understand what I'm trying to say? I'll sit out. I'll make it up there to Jersey, and I'll sit out over there in, in the Vince Lombardi, and I'll do my ten, and I'll wait. I'll wait till like two, three in the morning, mm. and then I'll move out to Massachusetts. You, you understand what I'm trying to say? Get it. I always ain't, try to. Ain't that, I the, always same, try to, yeah. ain't that the same idea for for like for like that little part of the world right there to drive in at night and try to get back out at night? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But sometimes, you know, you don't, you're not able to get back out at night. You know, you just got to know where to move and how. Um, I mean, like, like you said, I'm, I'm originally from that area. So I, I know a little tricks of the trade on that way. You know what I'm trying to say? Uh, you not, might not be as fortunate to get out and get out of there at nighttime, but I say definitely get in there at night. Uh, the way early, the You know, and um, you know, like right now, I squeeze forty-two hundred miles in uh, five and a half, six days, because I'm doing a dedicated run. I just from Laredo to uh, uh, Winsfield, Missouri. So you know, we're running, we're running GM parts over here. So um, it, it really works out well when I have a return from here because they'll they'll load us up with empty racks and I just shoot straight back down. So. Uh, you know, I learned something very valuable today being friendly with the with the girl that works at the desk there, you know, because sometimes they don't have returns and she told me which ones have the returns. So, you know, and that's another thing, man. You can't you can't come to these shippers and receivers with an attitude, you know what I'm saying? 
you know, because look what I look what I learned today. Now, now I know I'm going to stick to the seven o'clock loads. You know, I was in the three o'clock loads, and sometimes I wouldn't have a return. You know what I mean? And then, uh, then, then my six, my five, six day week will turn out to be seven, eight days. You understand? Because then I will have to, they will have to find me a load, and then you know, nothing pays going back to Laredo, so I will have to deliver to Houston or Dallas. So if I deliver to Houston or Dallas, I will have to catch another load coming coming down closer to Laredo. You know what I'm trying to say? So it just put more days on me. Yeah, I'll get an extra hundred miles here and there. But um, it, it was tough for me in the beginning, man, when the e-logs were mandated, bro. It, it was real tough. I, I couldn't even barely make 2,500 miles. You, you understand what I'm trying to say? Um, I had a hard time with the e-log, man. I had a hard time with the e-log. But once I learned how to how to master it, you know, uh, the split clock a little bit here and there, you know, um, you know, uh, try to manage your time and always try to start with your fresh 11 from wherever you start, you know, whether it be the ship or the receiver, you know, um, that, that helps a lot, you know. Some people are like, oh, you know, I'll park in a truck stop 20 miles away, you know what I'm trying to say? But, you know, you never know how long you get held up with the receiver. That That's one, right? So if you start your clock, you're already, you're already biting into your time. You know what I'm trying to say? You only got three hours to burn. So if you're dropping a load, now you got to go pick up another load and guarantee that you're going to ex- you're gonna exceed those three hours. So what I do is I try to park close to the receiver where I could creep in five miles an hour. You know what I'm saying? I get loaded or unloaded. I get my paperwork. Boom, I start with my fresh 11. And that, that, that's a big help. And that's and that, exactly that how I do my, it. My 4,000 miles. I do it just, yes, like, I, I do it do it just it. like that, man. I try to get close because the company that I drive for, they... They they want you they 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 have you to sign for your HOS hours. They want you to burn them eleven hours so as close as you can get. Yeah. That's what they want, man. Mad trucker, thanks for coming on, bro. I really do appreciate you coming on and uh, well, chopping it up I with you, man. You calling me, man. No, no doubt. No problem, bro. Anytime. Big G's got it locked. Boy. Won't you let me out?